Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about Phase 1 braces. And I'm sure you've seen our Phase 1 webinar. It's at letter G, letter P, webinar.com. We have a lot of information there, and we also have a whole Phase 1 play playlist on our YouTube channel. But I just wanted to clarify something that I realized I hadn't made that clear, and that is what you do with phase one braces. So phase one braces, and this is just my personal philosophy. You might get a slightly different philosophy um, from another orthodontist, but I'm just going to explain mine. Phase one braces, if you need them, um, is generally interceptive, right? So you're trying to straighten teeth, but you should only do so after you've created the bite ideally. So one thing I see that people make a lot of mistakes is they just slap some phase one braces on. They maybe pull some baby canines out, but what happens if you have a crowding case and you do this is that the incisors are just gonna take up the space of where the canines were, right? And then you're gonna block out the canines. So you're just taking a problem, you're solving it for a period of time, like a year, year and a half, looks nice, parents happy, and then all of a sudden you just made the problem way worse because now you've got four impacted canines. So a lot of orthodontists do do this, um, because parents request it, but it's really the wrong way to do things. Because you're, yes, you can address that issue in phase two, but it's a guaranteed problem. And as far as I'm considering, it's actually a worse problem than you started with. So I don't like to do that. So what I'll do in a crowding case is we'll develop up the arches first. Um, it might need a variety of different appliances to do that, expanders, etc. Um, fix the bite, open bites, cross bites, deep bites, um, overjet, you know, stuff like that. We're gonna fix all that. And then if needed, we're going to straighten the teeth. Sometimes it's cosmetic. And sometimes if you just create the space by expanding, they kind of come in straight to begin with and they start lining up on their own once they have more room to move. But sometimes you have maybe like an impacted canine or a lot of crowding and it's a good idea to throw a few braces on or you can do phase one aligners. But good to understand how the braces work. So let's talk about crowding. So we've got crowding and spacing are two different animals. So in crowding situations, First of all, this is not good. I want to show you good and not good. So this is not good. What's not good about this? Number one, they didn't develop the arches out. So we clearly have space deficiency. We definitely have a narrow upper arch. We have space deficiency, not enough room for the laterals, not enough room to straighten these bottom incisors. What they should have done, and maybe they are, is expanded the arches, upper and lower, upper more than the lower, and then aligned the top teeth. Maybe you don't even need to do anything on top. Just by expanding, you'd have space for these to drop down and they probably will drop down straight. Um, same thing goes here. You maybe don't even need braces here. Just by expanding, they might straighten up on their own. But you have to decide kind of how far are you gonna take this phase one? Is it, are you just fixing the bite, which is the, really the definition, interceptive? Or are you gonna do the cosmetic front teeth stuff too? I recommend on the front end of the phase one treatment to be very clear with what you're planning to do for the patient. Um, some people only are, you know, it's definitely going to be cheaper to do only the bite than to do bite and braces or bite and aligner. So clarify that. Sometimes I'll just say, we're going to work on the bite and if needed, we're going to do the braces. Maybe I'll build it into the price. Maybe it's an additional fee later. Anyways, just things to think about. But like I talked about what they did wrong here. In addition, the other thing they're doing wrong here is that they are only putting braces on the front teeth, but they're not connecting the braces to any back teeth. Now, remember, in phase one, this patient only has six permanent teeth here and probably has four permanent molars in the back. That's all they have. Everything else is babies. It's okay to glue a temporary bracket. I usually put them on E's. E's are baby second molars, so that's letter A, letter J, um, what, J, K, and T, I think. We call them E's in ortho. And that's totally fine. You know, in this stage, it's totally fine to put brackets on those. You can also put them in the six-year-old molars, but it's further back. It's harder to put on. There's usually more gum. So I like to put them on the ease. Um, then you would need to connect this once you had more space, which you don't have right now. So there's no reason, you know, you have to create space first um, to the brackets on the back. I don't necessarily put brackets on all the teeth because these tend to get loose pretty quickly and no sense in bonding to loose teeth. Um, but... I don't connect it until we get a little more straight in the front. So here they're probably in a 12 or a 14 night tie wire. No sense in connecting this to the ease in the back right now because what's going to happen is you're going to be in a super flexible wire and what's going to happen? Um, it's good. There's going to be a long span right here. And then unless you take a lot of preventative precautions, which may involve bumper tubing, closed coils, cinching, stuff like that, um, ligation, the darn thing every time the patient eats is just going to flex, pull out of the back tube, 
break that, break that, break that, break that. That's exactly what's going to happen, right? So if you wait to bond the back teeth ones on until you get this more straight, which again, we can't do here because there's no space to do it, then you can hook it up once you get into a heavier wire, like maybe like a 1725, 1825, 1925 night tie. And then you can hook it all together. This will cause this to round out more, which right now it's like all straight, right? It looks kind of silly. It looks like flat. And that's not how an arch is. An arch is curved. So that's why, that's what's going wrong here. So I just wanted to explain this. This is an example of a pretty well done phase one case. And I know it's a little small, so I apologize. But you can see they did things correctly. They expanded the arches, most likely. There's definitely space. They aligned the teeth in the front, and then they connected it with a wire to the back. And then you can see, I think, if I even look carefully, it looks like there might be some bumper tubing here, which is exactly what I'd recommend. If the wire is stiff enough with the bumper tubing, you probably don't need to flame and cinch it. And if anything I'm mentioning, mentioning doesn't make any sense, please message us. Um, best way to get in contact us is actually to go to our website at straightsmilesolutions.com and hit contact. And we will send you the videos that everything I mentioned actually has another video that we can reference to. So I'm kind of, this is a more of an advanced video explaining things. So this is the right way to do phase one. So you can see here, I would call this phase one pretty much done. So after this phase one, again, it's only fixing bite front teeth. That's it. You might connect the front teeth to the back teeth temporarily just around out the arches, but we're done here. Now you have to move on to retention. So lots of different options for phase one retention. Um, some of my favorites, I mean, some people do a bonded retainer. Um, it's temporary, so I don't have a problem with that. But remember, anytime you do a bonded retainer, if you watch my other videos, you're married to it. And kids in bonded retainers often aren't a good combination because there's a lot of breakage, right? Um, sometimes you just do like a space maintainer, like a lingual arch or an upper nance and no need to really do anything on top because usually if there is space, it stays straight, uh, especially if you intervene early. Some other options would be kind of your myofunctional, more MRC kind of retainers that just kind of have some walls to keep it straight. There's also some cool ways that some labs will do. I call them like phase one Essex, where it's like an Essex retainer, the clear kind that usually just goes over the teeth, but it actually goes over the palate. It includes the front four teeth and the back six year old molars and everything else is cut out. I like those two, those are really cool. So, um, few options there. What I generally don't recommend is your traditional Holly retainer because it, you know, with the wires and the clasps and everything, there's a lot of changes that happen in this stage right here between now and when all the teeth come in and you're going to be crazy adjusting the darn thing. It really isn't going to fit for more than a few months and it's a waste of money um, and often uncomfortable when it stops fitting. So I don't recommend that. Um, and of course you don't want to make a full Essex that goes over all the teeth because that makes no sense. So but one thing I think Invisalign dropped the ball on is they don't have a phase one retainer product, like a phase one Vivera, at least not yet. Um, that That's something they really dropped the ball on. And it's a huge opportunity for other, someone else. And you know, there's some retainer clubs springing up and retainers are a huge opportunity in itself. So um, the whole orthodontic aftercare experience. So anyways, all right, hopefully this helped you talking a little more about the why behind phase one braces. And as always, remember, we do have a really cool digital straight wire class at the moment um, that is still available. You can email us at straight smile solutions. Sorry, you can contact, contact us at straight smile solutions.com or email us through there. You'll find the digital straight wire class. Um, we'll ship anywhere pretty much. Um, you'll find it on our website um, and it can be customized. Um, you can learn from home how to do straight wire. Just some videos and a type it on and some supplies. And it's really, really easy and very cost, very affordable, very cost effective. So we're excited to have you join our class. We hopefully are going to be resuming our hands-on straight wire classes in 2021. So um, those are going to be held twice a year in Phoenix, Arizona. All right. Thanks so much.